Aaron. Tell me what you're doing. Yeah. 
Christmas morning sermon, our message, our Christmas time. We are having a uh, Wednesday night Christmas service, so we'll be having uh, snacks and food uh, and things like that, but I'll tell you about that in just a moment. For right now, we are going to uh, lift up our voices in prayer. I'm going to believe God, amen, we're praying for a number of people, uh, amen. Uh, we have to re remember that uh, I have said that if you're not feeling well, no matter what the symptoms, uh, stay home until you're symptom free. And so uh, we're praying for Keith Bender, who is home uh, because of that very thing. Uh, the Ravers, who have all tested positive for COVID, uh, but they have not been here in quite some time. So, uh, but they mentioned that to me. And so we're praying for them. We're believing God. So I've said they haven't been here in quite some time because... I don't want any of you to worry that, that you were here when they were here because we're, we're good. Amen. We closed down, went from live stream only till all of it was gone. And, uh, and uh, so, amen. So we're doing well. And our uh, in-person services have opened back up again. And uh, wow, it is, uh, it is good. It's great to be back in church. There's something missing when there's just me. And a very odd-looking Dusty staring at me you know, from behind the camera. Hallelujah. And so that's my son-in-law. I can speak that way. Anyway, so we are going to come before the Lord in prayer. We're praying for all these people that are sick in body. Any of you uh, that have know somebody with sick in body, we're lifting them up before the Lord. We're praying uh, for finances. We're praying for God to move in marriages. We're praying for God to touch this town, this city. This area, we're praying for uh, Bruce Callahan, is all the way in Australia, uh, where he's going to be living out his days, amen, unless I can kidnap him and get him back here, uh, amen, one of my very best friends in the whole world, and so we're praying for him, we're believing God to touch him and his family, and just bless their lives, uh, fantastic, uh, amen, so we're excited about uh, all that God's going to do in his life, uh, in his ministry, from here uh, forward, amen. Uh, we're praying for all of you. We believe in God, continue to bless you. Uh, it's just amazing, just the, yeah, I'll tell you, I wanna, I wanna tell you something, and we're gonna get there in just a moment, but it is a miracle to see what God is doing regarding jobs and people in our church. Every single male that I know of in our church has been promoted, has gotten uh, supernatural money, has gotten a better job, has, has all kinds of things. And uh, amen, I'm gonna open that up just in a moment. If they wanna give a quick testimony, they can raise their hand, we're gonna do an offering in just a moment. But for right now, let's come before the Lord in prayer. Let's believe God together. Let's see what God can do in this place, in your heart, in your life. We have a lot of children here, probably 20 kids, uh, total, maybe 15, I'm not sure what the number is. Uh, I, t I tend to exaggerate, so my wife is probably rolling her eyes already. But I don't know how many. Uh, amen. But we have a lot of kids. Amen. Uh, I think there's 20. It could be. Uh, anyway, so let's come before the Lord. I'm going to ask Brother Zach to open us up 
Amen. And he can do it right where he is. If he'd like, amen, open us up before the Lord. Lift up your hands towards heaven. And together, let's call upon the name of the Lord. We thank you and praise you. God, we need you in this house. We lift up those that are sick in body. We pray, God, for those that are struggling. God, have your hand upon those that are not here. Lord, we pray, God, that you'd move by your spirit. In Jesus' name. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you this morning for the service, this opportunity to gather together. Father, once again. Yes. And Father, I just... Just pray that you just want to look up all these prayer requests, Father, everything that's been mentioned, Father, those that are sick, those that are in, having problems, those that are um, going through difficulties because of COVID and all the other things that are going on right now. Father, please just move upon all these requests. Please just touch each person. Yes. Bless each situation. Yes. Please be with pastors who brings forth the message this morning that you've given up for us, Father. And please be with us as we listen. We give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. And we ask this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Amen. Take a moment, turn to somebody next to you, welcome them into the house of God. Greet somebody in Jesus' name. We'll be opening up for full on greetings soon enough. Amen. How many know 2021 is going to be a better year than 2021? Amen. Amen. How many know this COVID thing's just got to go? Amen. Just got to go. I'll tell you this, uh, and on live stream, I want to welcome all of you here that are watching on live stream. We're praying for uh, Maurice and Maria. I don't know if Aaron has been in touch with them, uh, but we need... Yeah, so we need to believe God uh, for them. We're praying also for Pat and Joe, uh, believing God for Tammy and, and for uh, Missy, and uh, just continuing to pray for all of those that are missing. Uh, amen. And there's a number of them that are missing this morning. Uh, hallelujah. Pray for all of you that are visiting, uh, that this becomes your permanent home. Uh, amen. Thanking God for every one of you. So, a couple of announcements. Uh, amen. This is going to be a very simple Christmas this year for our church. Uh, amen. And so, I just wanted to let you know that... Uh, we're not going to have any big programs. We normally have done some huge programs. The last time we did the Grinch, it was in front of uh, uh, 600, almost 700 people each night. 600 plus people each night. 400 people got saved. It was an incredible time. We did it at the mall. You're wondering, how'd you fit that many people in here? We can't. We took it to the mall. We did it. They gave us the entire... Um, what was the name of that store? Elder Beerman. I keep wanting to call it Dillard's. I don't know why. Uh, but it's similar. So, uh, yeah, so we did it. They gave us the entire Elder Beerman store. And uh, we did it there. If you got to see it, you'd see what an amazing spectacle it was. We'll do that again. We'll do some other things again. We'll get some things going. And uh, we are excited about that praise god amen uh and so that's really all the announcements that we do have we are having a wednesday night service it's going to be another christmas celebration aaron if you can help me and give me what's what's happening uh if you can just swallow your donut uh, we appreciate it well that's <laughs> that did go last time we're going to have our traditional candlelight um there is, so we'll have all that ready for you. Yes. Um, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we're going to do a Christmas communion. A Christmas what? Communion. Oh, we are, yes, mm -hmm. yes. And um, and then we're going to do some, some dessert, something fancy. And just something easy, some cookies, Christmas cookies. You know, Pastor loves those frosted ones. But whatever you want to bring, um, if you're feeling like it's just for something, that's yes. easy. If you just something easy, yeah. come and have a good time. Okay, so we're having uh, Christmas desserts. We're having uh, Christmas communion. We're going to have a candlelight service. I'll be preaching for about 15, 20 minutes. And we also have uh, uh, Brother Dustin Darty, who's our song leader. If you've heard him sing, you know he can sing. Uh, he's, he's got a, a level well above. And he's going to do uh, two... Christmas songs for us on Wednesday night is kind of a little mini concert. So we're going to have a great time. Two Christmas songs. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. I got him. I didn't just surprise him. I, I surprised him five minutes ago. So it's a whole new, it's a whole new me. It's a whole new me. 
Time. Uh, 7 o'clock. Okay. 7 o'clock. And it's, listen, you have not experienced until you saw him Silent Night with us in candlelight. It's, it's really good. It's very, very Christmassy. Yeah. And uh, amen. And uh, so I also will be preaching just for a moment. It won't be a long sermon. It'll be about 15 minutes. Uh, uh, amen. And so like this morning, I'll preach about four hours. And so we'll get you out of here by 3 o'clock. Just kidding. Some of you didn't even flinch. It's like, maybe I can do that. I don't know. Um, I'm just kidding. All right, so it is exciting uh, to be in the house of God. Let's give the Lord praise. Our ushers would come. We do want to take an offering. Let's give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Let's give him praise. Praise God, Christmas time is a time of giving, and we often spend a lot of money. We'll talk about that this morning in my message, but we often spend a lot of money on, on presents, on giving to people, and we forget about Jesus. Imagine, uh, imagine forgetting about Jesus on his birthday. The wise men brought gifts that were fit for a king, and... That's a picture that we get in the Word of God, that when you come before the Lord, amen, that's what they did. And so you are also called upon, and I know you can't maybe afford gifts for a king, but you can certainly give Jesus maybe what you buy for your aunt you haven't seen in five years. Uh, but the reality is, is that we take a moment and we give before the Lord. And not only do we give before the Lord, but the Lord gives back. How many can say amen? amen? I've been tithing all of my Christian life since 1983, which is now 37 years that I've been saved. And I've been tithing all those times. And I want to tell you, every single male uh, that I know of that have given me a testimony. And if anybody wants to raise your hand on what God has done recently, you may do that. Uh, anybody at all? Yes, go ahead. So, um, at my place of employment, it is based off of, um, my pay is based off of the base rate and commission rate. Well, lately with COVID-19 and all the stuff um, that's going on, we've had less and less people coming into our store, we have less and less people to sell things to, and I've been getting less and less commission every single paycheck, until the, most recently I've had no commission. So I've just been having to live off of hourly wages. and. I basically prayed that um, I could stay with the same company but switch positions when one came open. Well, a week after I prayed that, the position came open and I applied for it. And um, my last day in my store is um, actually Christmas Eve, whenever I get to leave early. Um, and then I go on a one week vacation and then I start at my new position at the other the other job within the same company making four dollars and fifty cents more an hour than what I make. And then they say if everything goes according to plan within the first year or by the end of the first year at the other position, I'll be making an additional um, like five dollars an hour on top of it. Wow. wow. Praise God. Come on. Come on, somebody. All right. I mean we heard uh, Alex's testimony. Um, last week, we heard uh, Ryan's testimony a couple of weeks ago. Uh, amen. I know that Zach uh, just got blessed uh, with some money that he wasn't expecting. He's excited about that. Uh, amen. We're excited about that because Zach tithes. So we're excited about that as well. Every time that God blesses each of you, God blesses the church. How many can say amen? amen. And that's a blessing. In fact, I, was, I give a certain amount every, every week. And as I was just giving, I give online, as I was just giving uh, before the Lord. Uh, hang on just a second here. I was in the middle of giving. Uh, and then it stopped. Anyway, I was giving before the Lord. And as I was getting ready to give, uh, um, God said, don't be a hypocrite. Because I just said to you that we need to give extra for the Lord for Christmas. And God just spoke to me, don't be a hypocrite, double it. So I did. I doubled what I normally give every week and so because God spoke that and I just want to say 
that that is that is me hearing God speaking, uh, and and He knows how to get a hold of me. Just call me hypocrite, and that'll do it. <laughs> and, amen. And so, but uh, you uh, you be a blessing to the Lord as well. Let's give us the Lord would bless us and would lead us to give. Amen. Brother Josiah is going to sing with the children today. Amen. Would you uh, open us up in a word of prayer? Dear Jesus, bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <coughs> You're on the spot. You might as well learn it. Seven years old. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Let's sing it before the Lord. things like. Amen. Praise God. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. We have a special, just a single song. Like I said, this year Christmas is going to be simple. Uh, we were going to do a big children's uh, program, uh, but then we had to close down for three weeks uh, due to the uh, COVID and, and uh, amen, when live stream only. And so that uh, wasted away. But our children, uh, amen, are not satisfied. Uh, hallelujah, until we do something. And so Aaron has put this together. Amen. They're just going to do a song for us. Amen. Let's give a Pentecostal applause for the children of the Father's house. Come on, come on. Here, come here, here. I got you. I got
good, huh? Oh, the kids did so well. How many can say amen? amen. Uh, Luke chapter 2, if you've got your Bibles. Luke chapter 2. Praise God, amen. From heaven to earth is the name of our message this morning. Amen. Being live streamed again. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, praise God, our audience uh, literally doubles, triples uh, with our live stream as well. So we're blessed to see that. 75 years ago, some of you may remember what I'm talking about. I might be dating myself. We grew up watching it when I was a child. But 75 years ago, the movie Miracle on 34th Street was released. How many remember that show? The Miracle on It's a Christmas classic, uh, even in black and white. I, I'm shocked they haven't redone it. Maybe they should. But uh, even in black and white, people are still watching it today. And uh, it was a story of a man who believed that he was the real Santa Claus and is eventually arrested and brought to court for the claim. He is defended in court by a young lawyer who tries to prove his claim, culminating in the dramatic scene where thousands of pieces of mail addressed to Santa Claus are sent through the Postal Service by way of the North Pole and poured out onto the witness table in court. The movie leaves the final decision up to you and up to me on whether you want to believe that he is the real Santa Claus or not. I say he is as real as any of them. So Christmas is the holiday where in America we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We celebrate his virgin birth, the manger, the wise men, Santa Claus, Rudolph, and even Frosty the Snowman too. Oh, what a glorious day in America. There's uh, some confused, maybe mixed messages in American culture about what Christmas really is. How many can say amen? It might be wise to remember that Jesus was born in a manger, not a shopping mall. Our lives can be so filled with chaos we can easily lose the meaning of this whole season. We can miss the greatest gift of all. For what? For what? What do we miss the greatest gift of all, which is Jesus being born for us? Inflatable yard decorations, shopping, Christmas cookies. Okay, maybe Christmas cookies, but plastic Rudolph pulling a plastic Santa in a plastic sleigh. Why choose plastic over purpose this morning? Presence over sacrifice. Toys over truth. Do we go through the motions of the season, church, missing that miracle of the birth of Jesus Christ? Acts chapter 20, verse 35 says, In all things I have shown you that by working hard, in this way, we must help the weak. We must remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Consider this with me this morning. That very first Christmas was simple. How many know what I'm talking about? It was not crowded. It was made due in an emergency situation. There was no fancy Christmas dinner. Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus were alone in a stable. Jesus lying in a manger, padded with straw, that before he got there, cattle ate from it. And guess what? It was the best Christmas ever, wasn't it? How many know that simple, toned down, emergency, we must do this, Christmas was the best ever. Now, we know that some visitors came later, but it was very simple. We don't seem to do simplicity anymore. I, I don't, I'm not a real simple guy. I like to do elaborate things. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dramatic kind of guy. I like to make it happen. I, you know, I just don't like 
uh, certain things left alone. I like to have all kinds of big things. And so uh, when we put on the Grinch, we had no idea it was going to become what it became. Uh, but when you've got a, a, a Grinch that's as good or better than the Grinch in the movies, you can do almost anything you want. Amen? And so simple is considered compromise, it seems. This year in our church, however, Christmas is simple. And that simplicity can enhance the joy and the real meaning of what we're celebrating here. Even in the midst of a global pandemic, based on NRF's annual consumer spending survey, Americans plan to spend on average $997.79 this year per person. Down 5% from last year, which was $1,007. Last year, over $700 billion was spent over Christmas, more than the total gross uh, domestic product of many whole countries. When perhaps over half the world has yet to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, and maybe even many more than half the world, uh, or at least a, a, a good percentage of the world, uh, are struggling with hunger. Think about this. If people just gave 1% of that $700 billion, what could we do with 1% of $700 billion? We could plant 140,000 churches. We could supply clean water to everyone in every uh, at-risk country combined. And to top it off, give a Bible to every person in the world. See, I'm convinced, church, that had two people been there that night in Bethlehem, in front of the stable, in front of the manger, in front of that scene, it is quite possible that they could have seen it entirely different. I believe that because all of life is this way, never, see God never presents himself in revelation in a manner in which we are forced to believe. God always gives us a choice how we're going to look at things. How many know that God gives you a choice on what you're going to do with church, what you're going to do with Jesus, your Savior? Amen. He never forces us to believe. We are always left with an option. For that is God's way. Thus one person can say, it's a miracle. While another says, well, that's a good coincidence. <laughs> See, there were approximately two and a half million people in Bethlehem during that first century A.D. Christmas. Of that number, certainly very few people in Palestine saw and heard and understood what took place that night. I would guess a very small fraction of the population even knew what was going on. When you read the gospel accounts of the birth of Jesus, it is clear that heaven and earth celebrated that miraculous event. Can you imagine the breathtaking awe? Come on, church, felt by those humble shepherds that are just watching their sheep at night around a campfire and a multitude of angels, a multitude of heavenly hosts, amen, just appear, bright, shining light, singing praises to God. Hallelujah. Marking that powerful and wonderful occasion. There was a brief star in the sky, but the only ones apparently, or I'm sorry, there was a bright star in the sky, I didn't mean brief. It's a bright star in the sky, but the only ones apparently to pay any real attention to it were pagan astrologers from the east. If anyone did see Mary and Joseph on that most fateful night, they were too preoccupied with their own problems to go and have a look or to offer any assistance. Certainly there was no place for them to stay. No room at the inn. So what we see... And what we hear in life depends not upon the events, but rather how we interpret the events that God shows us, that we're involved in. Some may miss the miracle of Christmas because of what they are looking for instead. Let's read our scripture, Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 15. If you have your Bibles, follow along. If you have a cell phone, you have more than 20,000 Bibles. We can just download one. Luke chapter 8, verse 8 is where we'll start. Now there were 
in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. This is a monumental moment, church. We read this through with such ho-ha, such hmm, okay. We sometimes just skip right through it as if it's a children's play from Sunday school on Christmas, but this is explaining and, and demonstrating an amazing event that took place one time in all of human history. Are you with me this morning, church? Well, at least Zach is with me. Yes. Amen. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. Church, listen. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude, listen, church, of the heavenly host, praising God. This would have been, this would have been a, an amazing uh, lifting up and praising uh, a harmonic demonstration of noise like you've never heard in your life. Amen. Praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think let's go to Bethlehem to see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. Every year I make a point of seeing Christmas for its long-reaching implications. A Savior born, a Savior uh, grew up to die on the cross, a, a God in the flesh. I mean, I, I, I try to make that point but I don't know that we get it. I try to make that point of seeing Christmas for its long-reaching implications and not simply for its seasonal trappings and religious effects. And there's so many people that are only in church this time of year because they have a seasonal affection for Christmas. Not because they love the Savior, our Lord, that died for our sins. When you think about the angels appearing to the shepherds in the field with their message and their song, you realize that the birth of Jesus means something radically different in heaven and intended to be on earth than perhaps the American traditional Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> I mean, we have a tree. It is decorated. Probably the best tree in this room. I'm just saying. We have lights outside our house, out in the middle of nowhere. You can't see them until you pull out of our driveway. <laughs> but we have kids this year, so we decided to do up some Christmas. And so we, we do all that, but listen to me. What's traditional about that? It's American traditional, not yeah. biblical traditional. Come on. God is into the Savior. Come on, somebody. Heaven yeah. is into the angels pouring out their hearts, praising God, singing in perfect harmonic uh, tone. Amen. And when you think about this, yeah, when you look at the American Christmas, the American traditional Christmas, there are some similarities. There's some historical significance uh, of our modern Christmas traditions. If and it's there if you dig deeper. So I want to share some of what you do that you may have no idea originated with the Savior, originated with God. Come on. We associate the colors of red and white and green with Christmas. Historically, this goes back to the idea of the red blood of Jesus washing us white as snow so that we can experience new life, bear fruit, 
Uh, amen. Growing with the green, new life being associated with the color of green. So, so what we have is the red blood, the cleansing is white, our lives begin to grow green. That's what that means. That's where it comes from. We also associate giving and receiving gifts with Christmas. This goes back to the idea that every gift comes from God. Come on, somebody. That God has given his only begotten son to us as a supreme gift. Amen. For humankind. Hallelujah. It also has something to do with the three wise men that brought gifts fit for a king. Many think of Santa Claus this time of year, which actually evolved from a man of God, a man of God in 400 AD that was a priest, Nicholas, and he gave away most of his wealth to help children. And so Saint Nick was what he was called by the Catholic Church, but he gave most of his wealth to children. That's where Santa Claus came from. Father Christmas, Saint Nicholas, Santa Claus. I don't know where Santa Claus comes from, Saint Nick, but that's a different sermon. So we think of the Christmas tree and the candy cane and the Christmas lights, as I just mentioned. I've read various articles giving the historical Christian significance behind each of those as well. It really depends on how you see it, but there is Christian, uh, religious, historical significance to everything we do in America for Christmas time. It's time maybe you learned that. Maybe it's time that Jesus would be first and then everything else you do flows out of that. Come on, somebody. There's the light in the darkness in Luke chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid, keeping watch over their flock by night. Night equates to darkness. It's a powerful metaphor in Scripture. Darkness is. And behold, the Bible says, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of God shone around them. So God illuminated the darkness with his presence. Yes, amen. And this is his nature. And this is his purpose. In our lives and in the lives of all mankind, or in this day and age, womankind as well. But this is nature to illuminate in the darkness. The Christmas lights that we light every year illuminate the light of Christ in the darkness. John chapter 1, verse 1 through 9 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And He was in the very beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. And in him was life, and the life was the light of men. You hear that word? And the light shines into the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend her. The darkness didn't understand her. The darkness can't cope with it. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And this man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. John was not that light. John the Baptist was not that light. But he was sent to bear witness of that light. And that was the true light which gives light to every man cometh into the world. The Christmas light should remind us of the light of God piercing the darkness. That we are to be his lights in our communities, that we are to shine forth the glory of God in our testimony, in our countenance, in our behavior, in our ethics, in our integrity. Our lives, our moral character, our Christian joy, our happiness should serve as a light to a dark world. Yes, amen. Like a child smiling so bright, so innocently. I have a, a little three and a half year old that's in our house and I just watched her up here sing and she knew every single word. She sang with such innocence. It, it, it is amazing. That's what God has called us to be to a dying world. The Bible says the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness, the world did not comprehend it, doesn't understand it. Some translations will say that the world did not see it. 
didn't see the light. Can you imagine being stuck in darkness and the glory of God shines a light to get you out of it and you don't even see it. Jesus. You don't even, don't even notice it. How many know we're living in that world right now? Mm. We're living in America that used to be uh, proud of its Christian heritage are now trying to get rid of it. America was founded by Christian men of God. They wanted to do something amazing in a dark world. And America is quickly going back that direction into the darkness. So instead, God has sent us that the world might be able to comprehend us, men and women of God. Are you hearing me? Amen. Our change, our new nature, our testimony, what God has done in our lives, the light of Jesus shining through us. Amen. You should be able to walk into a room and change the dynamics of that room yes. by your countenance, by the light of God shining forth. Amen. They should know by your first word, or maybe with no word at all, that you are a born-again Christian on your way to heaven, that the light of God shines through you. That's Jesus shining through us. And we're given good news of great joy. Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. And the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, good news of the great joy which will be to all people for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. Christ, Christ uh, Christmas is a joyous occasion because it reminds us of the good news of the gospel not of a man in a red suit. Amen. Which we, we love the tradition but not in a man in a red suit but of the miracle of a Savior that's come to set all men free. Amen. That Jesus Christ was born as a baby to raise, amen, all God and all man to raise up to die on a cross so that you and I could be free. Yes. So the light that was in him would be in us. Mm. And we would shine in the darkness. Mm. And we would turn the world upside down. Are you hearing me? Yes. The Christ, Messiah, the Lord has come. Not just for the Jews, but for all people, the Bible says. When we forget the good news, church, we forfeit the great joy. When we forget the good news, we forfeit the great joy. Yes, amen. I said, when we forget the good news around Christmas, Jesus. in life, we forfeit the great joy. Psalms 16, verse 11. This is a messianic prophetic psalm. And it says in verse 11, you make known to me the path of life in your presence, Jesus. That's what this is saying. In the presence of the Messiah, in the presence of the Son of God, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, O God, are pleasures forevermore. Nehemiah 8, verse 10, do not sorrow for the joy of the Lord is your strength. I want to talk quickly about the bread of life. Luke chapter 2, verse 12, the bread of life. And this will be a sign to you, church. A sign to all people. That you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. Even this little miraculous detail depends largely on how you see it this morning. The symbolism couldn't be more powerful. This will be a sign to you, the scripture says. This will be a sign to you, the scripture says. Jesus, the bread of life, is born in and had his first crib as a feeding trough. Are you hearing me? He's the bread of life. That's what he's called as the Savior of the world, the bread of life. Amen. Hallelujah. That he was born in a feeding trough. It's a powerful thought. Many years earlier in the book of Ruth, Naomi and her family, they leave Bethlehem because of a famine. Bethlehem means house of bread. <laughs> they left because there was no bread in the house of bread. How many know Jesus came to bring bread back to the house of bread? Oh, come on. Now in Bethlehem in a feeding trough, 
The bread is back, baby. The bread is back. John chapter 6, verse 35, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes me shall never thirst. I want to talk about the miracle, the gift. Luke chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. This is the gift of God is giving men with the birth of a Savior. This is the gift that God is giving men with the birth of a Savior. Peace on earth. With a Savior, there's peace on earth. Without a Savior, there's rioting in the streets and in the cities of America. Are you hearing me? His goodwill towards mankind is His presence, His righteousness, His holy, His light. He is not willing that any soul should perish. The sky was filled with angels giving glory to God for what God has done for us. And as Christians celebrating that birth this morning, we ought to at least be able to match their praise. We ought to at least be able to lift up our hands and sing before the Lord with a bit of excitement, some bit of anticipation of the greatness that God has given us. Thank you, Lord. How Angels you bursting out in song for crying out loud. You're looking at your watch. You're yawning. Thank you, Lord. Angels bursting out of song, multitudes of the heavenly host praising God in the sky. And we, do we celebrate the miracle of what's come from heaven as a gift to earth? We ought to have a merry, happy Christmas because of all that God has given us through his son. He's given us goodwill. He's given us peace on earth. With Christ is peace. Yes. Forget the presents. Forget the malls. Forget the money. Forget the shopping. Forget the cookies. Okay, don't forget the cookies, but the rest. But remember, the ultimate gift and goodwill God showed us. That he allowed his son to be born in this world. That he sent his only son into a mess of sin. And grief. Oh, that was the world that you and I live in. He sent his son to be born in this world, and the world became and the word became flesh, excuse me, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The ultimate gift of goodwill that God showed us. Imagine with me this miraculous truth. The multitude of angels are praising God. The sky is filled with praise and honor. The Savior is to be born in the lowest of human conditions, in an animal's barn. And these same angels don't have the first clue. Are you listening to me? The same angels that are praising don't have the first clue what a Savior is. They don't have a soul as we do. They don't know. They don't understand salvation. The Bible says that. They don't have the first clue of what it would ever feel like to be redeemed, to have the burden of sin removed, the eternal pardon placed instead on our lives, and then to be raised from the dead to everlasting life. They don't get it. They have no clue about any of that. Yet, they are dancing around in the heavens like they know what's going on. I love this. And you and I know what this means. We have been saved. My life is radically changed. We have been saved. We know what it feels like to be saved. We know what the burden of sin being removed from our lives. We know what God putting our families back together, even that God doing a miracle in our health and in our lives and in our finances. We know what that feels like. We know what it means to be free. Church, are you listening to me this morning? To be resurrected into a new life in Christ. We get that. We felt that. We've experienced that. We are living that. Come on, church. How much more should we praise God with the knowledge that we have than the angels who have no idea 
What's going on? See, I wonder, I wonder what I would have heard had I been there that night. See, it is a question that annually haunts me. What would my perspective have been if I would have been in Bethlehem that night? Would I have heard the choirs of angels singing or simply the sounds of barnyard animals shifting around or, or, or the, the rallying in the market in Jerusalem back and forth, people uh, uh, closing up their business for the evening? Would I have seen the star in the sky? Would I have recognized the significance of heavenly things taking place that night right in, my, in front of my face? Can I recognize prophecy even now being fulfilled and a move of God of historical significance taking place right in front of me? Can we recognize even revival in our church when it comes? Can I step into that? Can I step into a move of God? Because I recognize the move of God because God prompts me to step into it. Can I step into it? Hallelujah. Can you? Jesus. Or maybe what I've simply seen two poor and very frightened kids looking for a safe place to have a baby. Would I have understood the hushed silence of the divine presence of God or simply the chill of a cold east wind on a winter night? Would I have understood the message of Emmanuel, God is with us? Or would the enormous cosmic implications of that evening just have passed me by without a clue? Does it pass you by without a clue every year as we celebrate? Can I see the miracle of this season, church? Listen to me. Or am I trapped in seasonal affection for the holiday spirit only? Oh, come on. Do you see the miracle of Christmas this year? Do you see the miracle of Christmas this year? 2020 has been a doozy, I'll give you that. 2020, somebody turn in somebody next to you and say, been a doozy. Been a doozy. You got to say the word. Without saying the word, we don't get it. Say, 2020 has been a doozy. I want to hear you. I want to hear you say it with frustration. That's right. That's right. Been a doozy. It took me a minute to find that word. You guys can't just take it lightly. I mean, how do you describe 2020? Oh, my. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to go somewhere. I don't want to make it dark after we just brought the light in here. <laughs> After a tough year of restrictions, mask wearing for some, lockdowns while living through the coronavirus pandemic, many of us are looking for a sign of hope. Come on, church. Yes, and we are lucky. I want you to hear me. I want everybody to pay attention. Turn to the person next to me and say, listen to the guy. Pay attention. I want you to hear me. All right. So we're lucky this year. The world may get a sign on Monday, tomorrow night. December 21st, when Jupiter and Saturn come together to form a great light in the night sky. And it's all too fitting that this should happen right before Christmas. Roughly in the year 6 BC, Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus ordered that the whole empire be taxed by way of a census. And all the citizens had to return to their ancestral villages. Thus a very pregnant Mary and her husband Joseph make the trip to Bethlehem. And on their journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem, I've done that journey in a bus and it took more than uh, more than an hour and a half. So on their journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem, Mary began delivering the baby. That happens. Babies don't have a calendar or a clock. The closest place to stop was an inn, but all the rooms were full. And we know the story, but indulge me anyway. Give me a minute. So they were sent out to the manger where Mary gave birth to Jesus, the Son of God. And at that same time that Mary and Joseph were traveling to Bethlehem, what looked like a bright star appeared in the night sky. Three wise men sensed that this was a great star. It would lead them to their Savior, a king. So they followed that star uh, to an inn in Bethlehem where they found Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus. And that star that signaled the birth of Jesus Christ became known as the star of Bethlehem and later the Christmas star. And this year is special because Jupiter and Saturn will reach their closest separation on the winter solstice, solstice the darkest day of the year. 
Science calls it the Great Conjunction. And the last time that there was a visible conjunction with two planets was March 4th, 1226. The two planets won't be this close to each other again until March 15th, 2080. And then again sometime after the year 2400. So some level of the Great Conjunction happens every 400 years, but it's not always visible every time. Science has, however, traced it back to approximately 6 BC. When did the Roman census, give me a quiz, when did the Roman census take place? 6 BC. So science has traced it back to roughly 6 BC when it would have been a triple conjunction, three planets involved. A triple conjunction, which means it would have been brighter and it would have been occurring over some months, a long enough period of time for the wise men to see it, to map it, and to travel. And it's estimated to be around that time that Jesus was born. And tomorrow night, in the night sky, the further north you get, because this is a star that's meant really for the Middle East and the, and, and, and the, and the, uh, you know, uh, the, the place in, 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 in the tropics, but it's not necessarily for the north because Jesus wasn't born in the North Pole. That would be another savior that America's looking at. But the reality is the farther north you get, the shorter period of time you see it, but you will be able to see a bright star in the sky tomorrow called the Christmas star. That is the same likely the same phenomenon that broadcast the birth of Jesus Christ. It's once in a lifetime. It's once in generations. It's 400 years from the next one, which they don't believe will happen at night, so you won't see it. So it'll be after 2400 years. It'll be after 2400 before you could ever see this again. And it's tomorrow night. What a fitting year to put that in, 2020. Yeah. Huh? How many know the devil is mad in 2020? Yeah. Come on. And does not want us having any hope in 2020. But God gives us a star to look at, just as a promise, just as a reminder that he came to bring light into the world. Let's bow our heads. Close our eyes for a moment from heaven to earth. If you're not saved, you're not born again. If you're not right with God, you're not on your way to heaven. It's that simple. If you've never uh, uh, turned to Jesus, made him your Lord and Savior, accepted him in your heart, believed him uh, for your destiny and your purpose in your life, Amen. Believe that he is the savior of the world and that without him you are destined to hell. If you're here this morning or you're on live stream. It is important that you and I understand the gravity of 2020. There are things that have happened in 2020 that can only mean the last days, the, the end of the end of time are fastly approaching. There are signs in 2020 that lead us to believe that it is possible for a nation as strong and powerful and Christian as America to lose its marbles in nine months. It's possible for a nation to fall apart, for chaos to rise up, and for nonsense to take place to a level that I've never seen. If you're not saved, if you're not right with God, today would be the day. This is your opportunity. This is your time. Christ has brought you the light. The goodwill towards men is Him bringing you His Son to save you so that you can be right with God and spend eternity with Him. And if you'd ask Him to be your Lord and Savior right here this morning, he will do that very thing. He will forgive you of your sins. 
He will come inside your heart. The Bible says the kingdom of God is within you. And he will become everything you need to spend eternity with him. If you want to give your life to Jesus this morning, I want you just to raise your hand quickly all over this place. I want to give my life to Jesus. I, I want to make sure I'm going to heaven. You'd raise your hand quickly all over this place. Put your hand up so I can see it. You're on live stream. You would like to join honest hearts. You'd like to give your life to Jesus. You'd raise your hand. If you're driving, you'd pull over. Wherever you are, you bow your head. And if you'll say this prayer with me and you'll mean it with your whole heart, Jesus will set you free. He will make you whole. And in a moment of time, heaven will be yours. Because the gift that God gave you on Christmas was from heaven to earth. Goodwill, the gospel to all men. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I ask you to come into my heart to forgive me of my sins. I believe you died for me and rose from the dead and I can have eternal life. I ask you, Lord, to give me the strength, the wisdom, the power to live for you all the days of my life from this point forward. You be my destiny. You be my Savior. And I dedicate my life to you forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's give a Pentecostal praise. Hallelujah. We thank you and praise you. We thank you by your name. Lord, we lift you up. Jesus. This altar is open. You can come and find a place to pray. We're going to switch off the live stream to give them privacy at the altar.